Hello everyone. In this video, I'll be going through demo of shell commands on my Mac laptop. If you have a Windows laptop, please watch the next video, which will go through the same demo on a Windows platform. Let me first show you how to launch terminal on your laptop. There are two different ways for you to launch terminal. The first way is for you to press and hold the command key on your keyboard along with space. That should launch Spotlight Search. Type in the word terminal and you should be able to click on the terminal application to launch it. The second way is for you to open Finder, navigate to Applications, find the Utilities folder, double click on it and you should be able to locate the terminal application let me go ahead and launch it by double clicking the terminal application. I want to show you how you can follow along with my lecture demo. I have a browser window open to the Python 3 installation video. I'm going to resize my browser window in such a way that the lecture video occupies the first half of my screen and then I can resize my terminal window to occupy the second half of my screen, enabling me to follow along with the lecture demo commands. For example, I can type in whatever command that I am going through on my Python installation video here. Let me go ahead and maximize my terminal window. The first command that I want to show a demo off is the clear command so that we can start with a clear screen. Go ahead and type in clear and press enter. Let's get started by looking at what the prompt here says. The prompt gives me information about the name of my laptop which is configured as Meenakshi's MacBook Pro. Then following that it tells me that my username on my laptop here is Mina. Let's try out the PWD command. PWD is the short form for print working directory that is going to display the absolute path name for my current working directory. Right now, since I'm in my user directory, that's going to show me slash users slash Mina. What if you don't know how a specific command works? How can you find out documentation for it? The command for that is man, which is short for manual. You can type in man and then type in the command name for which you want to read the manual for. Then you can press enter, which will open up the documentation for that command. And you should be able to see all the relevant details here. In order to exit the manual, you'll have to type in Q, which is for quit. Once again, if you're inside the manual, you'll have to type in Q on your keyboard in order to quit the manual. Let me go through some of the keyboard shortcuts, which will come in handy to avoid typing a lot of strokes on your keyboard. Let's say that you're trying to navigate through the directory structure here and you want to go to the directory cd slash users slash mina. Instead of typing the entire slash users, you can type in capital U and S and if you hit tab, that will auto complete the rest of the directory name for you. If there are multiple directory names that begin with capital U and S, you'll see a list of choices for those directory names and you should be able to type in more details of that. This will come in handy because sometimes you might not remember the full name of some directory on your laptop. Let me go ahead and show you the cd command here. So I'm just using the cd command which stands for change directory. I'm saying change my current working directory into this particular directory. Recall that this part of the command is called as an argument. Since I'm already on slash users slash mina, the cd command will not have any effect here. What if I had a typo in my command? Let's say that instead of 
M W E N A. I had typed in M E E E N A. How can I stop executing this command? Other than pressing enter, you can press Control C, which will stop the execution of the previous command, even if you haven't started the execution for it. Control C enables you to just quit whatever you're typing, and then the prompt appears one more time for you. What if you want to repeat one of the commands which you just executed? Let's say that I want to repeat the PWD command. How can I use the keyboard shortcuts to find that command? You can use the up arrow key, which enables you to go through all the commands that you've typed in this particular terminal window. Notice that I was able to find the PWD command. And if I had hit enter, I should be able to execute that command one more time. Another uh, command which is very useful for you to search through old commands which you've typed on your terminal is the history command. So if I go ahead and type in history and press enter, that will show me a lot of uh, commands that I've typed in in the previously used terminal window session. And you can copy paste any of these commands in order to repeat the execution of a particular command. Let me go ahead and clear my screen here. As you can see, there are 509 entries in my history. What if I wanted to see just the last 10 entries? How can I do that? You can do that by typing in history and then you'll have to type in the pipe symbol. In order to type in the pipe symbol, you'll have to hold down the shift key on your keyboard and press the backslash key, which is right below your delete key on your keyboard. And that should enable you to type the pipe symbol. Then we'll be able to type in another shell command, call us, sorry, called as the tail command. Tail command enables you to see the last few lines of any commands output. To explain how this command works, I'm executing a command called history, taking the output, and then I'm using the pipe to redirect the output to another shell command called as the tail. Notice that now you're only seeing the last 10 entries in the history. You can of course control how many entries show up uh, on your screen by using the hyphen n option in the tail command. And you can say instead of 10, you want to see 12 entries. Let me go ahead and clear my screen. The next thing which I want uh, to show is uh, the shortcut for accessing the home directory. So you can type in the cd command. And if you type in tilde, which is the keyboard uh, character right beneath the escape character, once again, hold down shift and press tilde. So if you type in cd space tilde, that will take you to the user directory, which is where we are currently at. So let me try to cd into a directory which doesn't exist here. So I'm going to say cd space examples. Since the examples directory doesn't exist, I'm going to get an error saying that there is no such file or directory. Let me show you how to create examples directory. The command for creating a new directory is mkdir, which is make directory in short. So once you type in mkdir, you need to type in the name of the directory that you want to create. So if I go ahead and press enter, now I should be able to cd into the examples directory. Let me repeat the cd tilde command. I'm going to use the up arrow on my keyboard until I reach that command. So now if I press the cd tilde command, notice that it is now taking me back to the slash users slash mina directory. How can I get to desktop from here? So once you're in the home directory of your user, you should be able to type in cd space desktop. I don't want to type the whole thing in, so I'm going to use tab for autocomplete. All right, so let me 
me show you the ls command which enables you to list all the directories and files on your current working directory which is the desktop so the plain ls command just lists the files and folders there are various options which you can use along with the list command say ls hyphen l which will give you additional details about each of the directory or files that are present in the current working directory. Let me go ahead and clear my screen here. And then I'll show you few examples of relative parts. So let me type in cd tilde and I'm going to type in desktop. Once again, I'm going to use autocomplete. Then I'm going to type in examples. This directory doesn't really exist, right? So what should I do to create it? I need to use the mkdir command. So I press the up arrow. I want to be able to edit the first two letters of my command here, right? The shortcut for going to the beginning of your command is to use control and A button together. And if you use control and E, that will take you to the end of the command. Once again, control and A takes you to the front. Control and E takes you to the end of the command. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to mkdir command so that we create a examples directory on desktop. So let me go ahead and cd into the examples directory. Let's look at our current working directory. Right now I am inside the examples directory in desktop. Notice that we created another examples directory directly inside the users slash mina directory. You will be able to use the same directory name in multiple locations on your laptop. So let me show you a couple of examples of uh, uh, absolute paths here. So I need to go to the examples directory inside users slash mina. So I can do that by saying users mina example, sorry, examples, my bad. What if I want to go back to desktop examples instead? I can do that by saying cd dot dot, which will enable me to get out of the examples directory. Let me go ahead and display the current working directory. My apologies for that. Going back to the previous uh, version of the cd command, I'll have to type in cd space dot dot to get out of the examples directory. Then I want to be able to get into desktop directory. Then I want to go into examples directory. So here, here is one relative path to the examples directory inside the desktop. What if I'm inside users directory? How can I go to desktop examples directory? I'll have to type in cd mina desktop and examples. Here is another example of a relative path to the exact same examples directory. Let me go ahead and show you how the echo command works. Let me clear my screen. I'm going to type in echo hello and that should uh, display the text hello onto my screen. What if I wanted to redirect this text into a file. So I'm going to do that by saying echo space hello greater than symbol and then file.txt. Let me fix that. How can I take a look at the contents that got written into the file file.txt? I can do that by using the cat command. I'm going to type in cat and then provide the argument as file.txt. You can see that file.txt now contains the text hello. Let me execute the ls command in the current directory. Notice that we only have file.txt. That's because we created the examples directory from scratch and we only wrote content into file.txt file. What would happen if I executed another echo command here which says echo world into file.txt. Let's now take a look at file.txt one more time. 
Notice that the previous contents of file.txt got overwritten and now you only have world. What if you want to retain the previous content? Let me go ahead and repeat echo hello redirect file.txt command and then I'm going to repeat the echo world command as well with one specific change. Instead of using a single redirect, I'm going to use a double redirect with double greater than symbol. This will append to the existing file. Now if I type in cat file.txt, notice that we are getting both of those words inside file.txt. Let's go through some commands about the current uh, directory and how to move files to other files and things like that. Let me go ahead and clear my screen really quickly here. I'm going to show you a push D command which enables you to push the current working directory into a stack. How can you access the current working directory? Recall that you need to type in a dot for that. So now my stack has the current working directory which is desktop slash examples saved on it. Let's say that I'm trying to navigate to some other directory. I want to go to users, Nina, and then examples. How can I go back to the previous directory is by typing in the command called popd. That is going to enable you to quickly go back to the previously pushed directory into your stack. This is a very awesome combination of commands on shell. I use this extensively while navigating around my terminal. Let me go ahead and clear my screen. The next command that I want to show you is the copy command. Let's say that I want to copy file.txt to another file called file-copy.txt. I can do that by using the copy command. The copy command syntax is cp followed by a space and then source file name followed by a space and then destination file name. I can go ahead and press enter. Now if I execute the ls command, notice that there are two files and I should be able to see the exact copy of the content of file.txt inside file-copy.txt. The next command which I'm going to show you is the move command. Move command enables you to rename a particular file. Let's say that I want to rename filecopy.txt into file-v2.txt. Now if I execute the ls command, notice that we no longer have file-copy.txt, but we have file-v2.txt. Let me go ahead and display the contents of the newly renamed file here really quickly for you. I'll go ahead and wrap up this video here. That will be it for today's lecture.